Good morning, listeners. Welcome to another edition of The Home Show. My guest is Dr. Cynthia Fortescue, an architect and lecturer at Hudson University. The topic of today's program is the tiny house movement. Welcome to the program, Dr. Fortescue. Thanks for having me, Alistair. Please call me Cynthia. So, Cynthia, tell us a little bit about the tiny house movement. Well, Alistair, to put it simply, the tiny house movement is an emerging social movement of people who want to downsize their living space and minimize their material possessions. Tiny house owners share the philosophy that people accumulate too much stuff that they really don't need. They have decided to live small. What's the difference between a tiny house and, well, a small house? My first apartment in New York City was 275 square feet. Is that considered a tiny house? Well, that was certainly a tiny space, Alistair. Of course, many residents of large cities like New York, Tokyo, and Seoul live in tiny apartments. And small living spaces have been around forever. Some of our ancestors probably lived in tiny caves. By definition, a tiny house isn't an apartment. It's a freestanding house that is very small. How small is small? A tiny house is between 100 and 400 square feet, whereas the average American home is about 2,600 square feet. Wow, that's quite a contrast. Aren't tiny houses uncomfortable? Actually, despite its size, a well-designed tiny house can be as comfortable as a larger house. You see, tiny house owners have to utilize every square inch of space. And there are some pretty ingenious ways of doing this. So the size of the living area isn't as relevant as how the area is utilized. Every feature in the tiny house must have a function, and anything that isn't absolutely necessary must be excluded. Furthermore, each space must have a dual purpose. For instance, a sleeping area is typically converted into a living area during the day. Why do people get involved in the tiny house movement, Cynthia? People are attracted to the movement for all sorts of reasons, Alastair. One reason is financial freedom. Tiny houses are affordable. Some tiny houses can be bought as components and assembled by the owner very cheaply. Likewise, being so small, they're easy to maintain. Most people spend a third to a half of their income on rent or home loan repayments. That's a significant amount of money. And 76% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. A lot of people are stressed about losing their homes if they lose their jobs. Remember, during the economic crisis, many homeowners found themselves underwater. Their home loans were higher than the value of their homes. That's right. Many of these people walked away because they couldn't afford to stay in their homes. Some of them chose to live in a tiny house instead. Other tiny house owners have been displaced from their homes as a result of natural disasters, such as hurricanes or wildfires. They lost everything and had to start over. But not all tiny house owners have lost or abandoned their previous homes. Oh no, not at all. Many tiny house owners join the movement based on environmental concerns. They want to reduce their carbon footprint, you know, the amount of carbon dioxide and other carbon compounds they emit due to the consumption of fossil fuels, such as oil and coal. Some tiny houses are made of recycled materials, so they're environmentally friendly. So tiny house owners are concerned about finances and the environment. Anything else? I would add a third category, adventure. Some tiny houses are mobile. You know, they have wheels. Hence, the owners can transport them from place to place. They can hit the road and visit friends in other parts of the country without having to worry about accommodation. A lot of these people don't want to conform to social expectations. So it's a lifestyle change and a change that enhances their lives. Do you have to obtain a special license to drive a mobile tiny house? Generally, you don't, but the rules vary from state to state, 
so people should check with their local authority regarding license and registration requirements. Well, the tiny house movement is certainly an innovative concept. It sounds like it's not for everyone, though. That's true, Alistair. It's a logical and rational choice for people who want to simplify their lives and not be restrained by the demands of maintaining a large house. Most tiny house owners I talk to say their lives have been transformed since they downsized. They like tiny living so much they can't imagine returning to their old lifestyle. But you're right, it's not an option for everyone. Only about 1% of the population chooses this route. Okay, we have to take a short break now and then we'll take your questions.